This morning, I, as I said, I struggled to find a message. I told you February is an, is an open month. So, as and when the message comes, that's when we will preach. Amen. It's very unusual of me, but for March, we will have structured teachings. Amen. How many of us were here on Friday? A lot of us don't come and pray on Friday. Friday was something. It's been a long time I came for Miracle Hour. But yesterday, I had a space and I came. You see, a lot of us have become prayerless. A lot of us have forgotten our place of power. And we are given too much space for the enemy to make incursions into our lives. And I want to encourage all of us to take prayer meetings seriously. You will not know the effect of prayerlessness until you are totally caught in its repercussions. Prayer must be continuous. And I show them how um, Herod took hold of James and killed him. But when he took hold of Peter, the church was in continuous, endless prayer. And though the same hand that took James and killed, took Peter, because prayer was going on, he could not kill Peter. If he had killed Peter, he would have said, rest in peace. But they had the antidote to stop him. I want to encourage you. I know a lot of things are happening in the country that is discouraging a lot of people. You've lost your job. Your business is not picking up. You are rather running into negative. You are trusting God for business. You have done all that you can and nothing seems to be happening. And you see the ungodly flourishing. They don't pray. They don't fast. They don't tithe. <laughs> and they seem to be okay. So why worry my hair? Remember, you have identified with Christ. And light is always in battle with darkness. So don't ever give up in your walk with God. Trust God. When you are weak, trust him for grace. When you are tired, ask him for his mercy. Let prayer continually go on in your mouth. The reason we gather to pray is that when we gather to pray, it is an army praying. When you are praying alone, you can pray anyhow. And you may not be motivated on any base. It's good to pray alone. It's good. That is what we call devotional prayer. And your devotional prayer must be stronger than your public prayer. But your public prayer has a stronger impact at the goal because of corporate anointing. Do you understand me? So don't, Christianity is not isolation. We need each other. It's because of you that I do more fasting and prayer. Because without you, I have to pray for myself. But I don't remember the last time I prayed for myself. So when we organize prayer meetings, don't allow the impact of COVID that has made all of us very choosy. We opt for what we want. COVID has made us more uh, comfortable because and now there are more online businesses. You don't need to go to the market. You can get all that you want in your, on your bed. Back, 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 fried rice and grilled chicken. Then you order. Oh, between 45 minutes, they are at your gate. Pay, pay, pay. You pick it, you are gone. There are people who can shop for you. There are people who can come and cook for you for the week. That is what COVID era brought. And if you allow it in your spiritual work, all the gains you have made before COVID, if you don't take care spiritually, you may lose all. So I want to call you to the place of having a sense of urgency unto prayer. A sense of urgency unto prayer. Prayer is powerful. Somebody said she was having so much pain before yesterday's service. After yesterday's service, the thing just disappeared. It is not fake. It's real. The power of God is real. When it enters into you, it can shift things. And consistent prayer is what that builds power. 
I pray that you will not just be some handsome, beautiful Christian who is not sharp in prayer. Because the times we are in are evil. But the Lord will continue to cover us. May you be called to the place of prayer. And may you have a strong agency for prayer. May you go back to the times you wake up to pray. May you go back to the times that you desire to be in prayer meetings. Hallelujah. Now this morning I'm not preaching about that. I'm going to preach something quite different. I want you to close your eyes and lift up your right hand. And pray the language of the spirit. As we sing this song, trust God that the Lord will stir you up unto urgent prayer. I have more than a song today. I brought myself. I am your sacrifice. I have more than a song.
on the altar. Let our life be aflame with the fires of eternity and the passions of the cross who died and rose and gave us the light that never dies. Accept this This morning I preach a subject you are not an accident. You are not an accident. For many of us life has been a journey of never reaching. A journey that doesn't look like you are getting to where you want to be. Life has been as though everything that should happen to you is what has happened to you. And you look left and you look right and you seem not to know what you are doing in life, even at your age. And the words of people that tells you that you are good for nothing even some of us, our parents once have told us the history behind our coming into the world. And they told you you were unplanned. They did not plan to have you. You, are an, you came by accident. I came to preach to you today, eyeball to eyeball, telling you that you are not an accident. The truth is that God created you to be a problem solver. God did not create man as a problem. You are not a problem. You are not a family problem. You are not a marital problem. God did not create you as a problem, but he created you to be a problem solver. Whether your mother, your father, your wife, your husband, your brothers, your sisters, your community believes that you sitting here watching me online is a problem solver, it must not be your problem. Your problem is to discover the destiny God put in you. Because he has made you a problem solver. The Bible said the gift and the callings of God are without repentance. So what God has made you, it is still in its originality. The circumstances of your life notwithstanding. Just follow me. Everything you see created has a purpose. Why did you buy the mobile phone? It's to make a call. Why is there saloon? So that you go and do your hair. Why are there spas? So that you go and they massage you. Why did we buy a microphone? So that when I preach, you can hear. And when they sing, you can hear. 
there is a use, a purpose for everything. Why do we have air conditions? So that the atmosphere will be cool like the way you are in. There is a purpose for everything. Why is there a pulpit? So that a pastor can use to preach. A chair was created for us to be able to sit down. Why do you think that God created you to be nothing? So you hear people say, Obia, no obia. So when you hear a pastor tell you that those things are not scriptural, you should believe it from today. That you are somebody. Tell yourself, I am somebody. Oh, tell yourself, I am somebody. Because God created me for a purpose. Yes. You are not a nobody. You are not created for nothing. God is not a waster. He doesn't waste resources. For him to take time to create you and bring you to occupy space on the earth, it means you came for a purpose, an assignment, a task, a duty that which you must make sure you will execute. You need to begin to ask yourself, why am I here? I preached that message about seven years ago. Why am I here? The essence of your living is for your purpose. Ask yourself, why am I here? Anytime I see people go wayward, anytime I go on social media and see all kinds of things by the youth, youth with energy, youth with sharp brains, youth with more years. Do you know that if you are 35 years today, you have about 50 years more to live? Have you thought about that? 50 years more to live. So why do you conclude on your life now? You, if you are 25, you have about 60 years. 60! But remember, the investment you make now will determine the harvest you will have. You are here for a purpose. You are here for an assignment. You are in your family for a purpose. And you are in this church for a purpose. You are in this world for a purpose. There is something humanity is waiting to come out of you. There is something. There is a Google. There is a Yahoo. There is a, a, a Facebook. There is a creative gift that is in you that you must gift the world with. There is something. There is something. You didn't come to live to die and go. You didn't come to be like Enoch. Enoch was and was not. He lived and he was not. No. You didn't come to be like Methuselah. 969 and he left. There is something on you. You didn't come to the world as a woman to be somebody's sex tool. Or to be a child producing machine. What were 9, 10, 12? Then you are just producing There is bigger, bigger, bigger assignment on your life. And until you rise like Deborah and begin to set the mind of God because spiritual things are not deposited in carnal mind. You need to set the mind of God. God, why am I here? What do you want me to do? When Saul was saved on the road of Damascus, when he came to his conscience, he said, what will you have me do for you? You are not a nobody. You are somebody carrying an assignment, carrying the grace of God, carrying the word of God. You are in that family not to add to the sorrow. You are in that family not to add to the poverty. You are in that family not to add to that chaos. You are in that family to bring order, to bring glory, to bring beauty, to bring money, to bring glory, to bring honor. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you will not forget yourself. You are not born to die. You are born to live. You will live and live and live and leave a legacy that will change the destiny of people in your family. I pray in the name of Jesus, wherever is not working, whatever is not working wherever of your destiny that life is not around I pray in the name of Jesus that vision and purpose I, I pray that 
you will rise up in your spirit and begin to see that you are here for a purpose you did not come to add to the number it is better you try and fail than not to try at all it is better you dare and fail than not to try at all at the age of 17 David was going for Goliath I came to wake up the lion and the giant in someone that you are wasting time destiny is waiting for someone ah 2022 we are in 20th February ah, a few days more we will be in the third month what have you initiated what have you planted which field have you broken the fallowness I came in the name of Jesus to wake somebody up somebody shout I am awake why did God create you When, you see, when, when, when you get obsessed with something that does not mean anything to destiny, it means you don't know why you are here. I pray for you that I, we, we, God is sitting in heaven waiting for us to bring glory to his name. God I mean, it is like I, I, I'm, 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 I'm the pastor of this house. There are official letters to that effect. So as long as Dr. Otabel is aware, the resident pastor of ICGC, the Karis Temple, is Pastor Prince. He doesn't need to come and preach here. That is why I am here. Do you, do, 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 do you get me? He doesn't need to come and organize programs for Karis Temple. That's why I'm here. God is seated in heaven. Has sent you on this earth. He is seated there because he knows that he has sent you. And when you came, you have forgotten about yourself. I came to speak to somebody. Your, your, your story does not give you the guarantee or the warranty to say, I cannot do it. I have failed in life. You have never failed in life. God has used different kinds of people at different stages of history. Your story is not different from theirs. You, 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 you get drunk and so what? Noah was a drunkard. Noah was a drunkard. Moses was a stammerer. David was a womanizer. Amazing. Joseph was a braggart. He likes bragging. Mary. There was stigma on Mary. You are not married and you are pregnant. You are a bad girl. Deep within her, she knew she was not a bad girl. Stigmatization, so you have stopped singing. Stigmatization, so you have stopped serving. Stigmatization, so you have stopped going to school. You better wake up because destiny, the face of destiny will change in the next five years. And if you do not prepare for it, oh, those who are behind you, they will overtake you. When your throne is empty, somebody will sit on it. I came to speak to you. If there will be increase, then destiny must be running. If there will be increase, then somebody must be in the will of God and in the plans of God. I came to speak to you. I came to instruct you. I came to command your spirit to come alive that your time to arise and take your position no matter where you are no matter your age it is now it is now it is now it is now you can go back to school your business can come alive that dream must be nurtured you have to pay the price Let's pay the price now. Let us pay the price now. Don't let it ever be in your mind that if I marry, then I've succeeded in life. Don't let it ever be in your mind. Because God did not create you to come and marry. 
God created you to come and run a purpose. Whether marriage or no marriage, the purpose must run. I thought you were clapping. You don't know how beautiful it is when two people who have discovered purpose are running and are married. It is very beautiful and it is very frustrating when one person has discovered purpose and one has just come to marry. The times are changing, people. The times are changing. And I pray that the Lord will open our eyes. That the kingdom of God must not remain in church. The kingdom of God must permeate all the areas of society. The kingdom of God. You see, when, when I read the stories in the news and I see mighty companies, mighty companies, I see God. Ushers in churches must own these companies. Choristers, instrumentalists must, we must be able to run businesses for it to succeed. Elisha was running a very good business and yet was a spiritual man. That is how come God called him to serve Elijah. Our businesses must be birth and they must grow. Enough with running business three years and you are no more there. It will take more than anointing oil on your head to succeed. It will take more. When I had the opportunity to go add up to my academics, I looked at my schedule and I nearly said I will not do it. But I did. In two months, I would have done. And I'm done with the master. <laughs> Didn't I pastor you? Didn't I preach? Didn't I go to work? Am I dead? Do I look ugly or more handsome? If you don't say my wife, you say. But I've added to my upgradement. If you don't sacrifice something, you are sacrificing your destiny. The price you pay today will determine the price you will receive tomorrow. A time is coming, there will be a differentiation between the goats and the sheep. A time is coming, there will be a differentiation between men and boys. The men are burning the candle now. The men are putting themselves under pressure now. The men are those who are on the field making themselves dirty for a crown and a garment that is so pure and clean, that is so precious. I pray for a lady in this house that God is looking for you. God is waiting for you, for you to make a U-turn, not just a U-turn, a repentance, a turn of repentance and begin to follow him because in you, in you, in you, is a voice to nations. In you is a voice for purpose. You are not a nobody. You are a somebody. When you continue to think that you are a nobody, you will never value the things God committed into your hands. When a nobody receives something that is precious, he will think that that thing they've given to him has no value. Because he doesn't expect anything precious and expensive to be given to you, to be, uh, to be given to him. But you know, you are the temple of the Lord and the spirit of God dwells in you. The spirit that created the world, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the spirit that opens blind eyes, the spirit that parted the Red Sea, he, he is staying in you. How do you say that you are nobody? Because you don't have money? Because you don't have high academic laurels? Because you don't speak impeccable English like the queen? No. It's not English that takes you to the kingdom. It is Christ. God created you for something. You have no idea. For some of us sitting here, you are supposed to build banks. You are supposed to build schools. You are supposed to run wild things. A 
Anytime you will increase in life, it will come in the line of destiny. Medical, um, medical people, health people, they receive their salary because they are solving medical problems. Carpenters receive salary because they are fixing things. If you are not, you will never be. If you are not, you will never be. You must know that God made you for a purpose. You are on assignment not to become the area Lady Gaga. The area queen. Area law law. So you brag that in this whole area, there is no lady as beautiful as me. How mobile you are. In this area. In this area, I am the sharp shooter. There was no guy who is a night rider more than me. I am the boss in town. You are on the path of failure if you don't change. Because one day you open your eyes. The people you used to ride in the night with, God has lifted them. God lifts people. God can lift anybody. I was preparing a sermon on the gospel and your past. But I didn't feel like preaching it today. But I'll preach it one day. This year. The God, your past means nothing to God. It means nothing. It, it, it means so much to people. But not to God. And it can mean so much to you. If you are not careful. Hey. Hey, mercy. God brought us here to represent him. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of heaven. Something must make you uncomfortable in your bed. Anytime you are lacking anything, it means that you are walking outside purpose. Because God makes provision when the vision is running. Christ came to solve a problem. And that problem was called sin problem. Matthew 1, 21. Sin pro- he came and that was his assignment. You came for an assignment. The Bible said, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. So assignment. I don't believe that driving an Uber is an assignment. I don't believe that being a lawyer is an assignment. Assignment is different from what you do. Assignment is what you achieve for God. So you need to ask yourself, what have I been destined to be? Your career, your profession becomes facilitators or vehicles for your assignment to be accomplished. That is why it is so appalling for you to go to the hospital and meet rude nurses, rude doctors, rude whatever. They, 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 they feel that they, because somebody is sick and came to them, they have the audacity to treat them anyhow. They forget that they are not good. One day, they were also fall sick. That's why it's so appalling. You go to the bank and the teller is being rude. As if the bank is for them. They forget the assignment. They love their profession so much that they forget the assignment. Assignment is not profession. Assignment is bigger than profession. And I'm praying that in this house, we will have people who are engaging the kingdom through all directions of their career. I thought you would say amen. amen. God does not waste resources. And God is not a duplicator. He doesn't duplicate. He creates. He's a creator. So as you are blessed, nobody is like you. In the world, nobody. Even if you are twins, you are not the same. You are not the same. 
you are different. You are unique in the sense of your purpose. In the sense of your purpose. I'm just preaching this to make you uncomfortable as we leave the church today. That God, I want to push you in your prayer room and begin to talk to God. That God, what have I been called to do? Why am I here? You're a problem solver. What problem are you supposed to solve? Are you compounding the problem in your family? Or you are helping to solve? Thank you, Holy Spirit. You came to life to solve a problem, not to produce problems. You came to Sakumono to reduce the number of prostitutes on the road and not to add up to them. You came to Sakumono to bring joy to families and not to add problems. Don't be that son who go and impregnate someone and bring sin to your family. You are not to add up to the, your cousins and your nephews that have gone that line. You are to bring glory. Come to your parents. Say, Papa, I am found someone and we want to come and greet you and let them be proud of you. That is, you are fulfilling an assignment there because in that family, it's not normal. Immediately your cousins hear that, some of them, maybe not all, some of them will begin to rethink. Actually, it's better to bring glory to the family than to bring shame. Never think that your actions and inactions go unnoticed. Never think. Grace did not come to make us burdensome in our families. Grace came to grace us, empower us, to make us become epitomes of God's glory. So anything that does not make you look glorious for the Lord in your family, in your community, in your life, is not part of your assignment. Are you here? Are you here? God created prophet Jeremiah for a purpose. He came at a certain time for a certain people for a certain purpose. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 7 to 8. And since God is no respecter of persons, he wouldn't create you without an assignment. There's an assignment on your head. For some of you, you need to pick it up early. For some of you, it may be UN Secretary General. As you are sitting here, you are, an, you, 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 you are a potential UN Secretary General. How are you preparing yourself? What are you doing? Maybe you are the next despite. You are the next downcoated. They all said they started from not a rich background. You don't read anything about achievers. You don't read anything. We don't read anything. We are just on social media doing TikTok. What a generation. And they want to drive Land Cruisers. They want to drive Range Rovers. Why won't you do Sakawa? Because you are on Instagram doing TikTok. They say, oh, it's a mistake. Then you start again. want to drive Range Rover with TikTok. <laughs> what a generation. You have read no biography of any billionaire and every day you are praying, Lord, make me a billionaire. You are joking. You've not read any biography of businesses. I watch my wife taking by books on, on great business people and will be reading, reading reading and she'll be disturbing me with what she reads. This person, this and I say, hey, when you marry a woman, business, this, you, are, you, you have to read. There is a way to every destination. That is why your businesses don't work. Then you will be binding witches. When there is structure, there is nowhere a witch can enter. Yes. You started business, you've employed everybody in your family. Are you okay? I'm not okay. Everybody in your family is working in your, in your business. So when the person doesn't come to work and you can't talk, and the business collapses, and they go and look for an, another job, but they didn't know that you resigned from a big job and invested in the business. 
They don't care. They will go and get another job. And you will be crying. Until we change. Nothing will change. He will. Anointing oil does not necessarily bring business success. You can bath anointing oil. Let your eyes be red with the oil. And yet your business will collapse. If, 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 if you don't know how to run a business, if you know how to run your own life, it's time for you to be a leader of your life first. You have not led yourself. You want to lead others. It's not, it's not possible. Take yourself out of the pit. Then you can be able to have grounds to pull others. The Bible said, but the Lord said unto me, say not I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak, wherever. So God sent Jeremiah. The same way for Esther. Esther entered into the palace, and she forgot about herself. She was enjoying the fans of a queen. She was enjoying the meals, the pleasure, the activity of queenship. It's so nice. And one day, problem was brewing and she didn't care. She was not ready to make interventions. The Jewish were on the spot of being annihilated, removed from the surface of the earth. And Mordecai sent the message to her. Hey, Jack, you are not in the palace for fun. You are not in the family for fun. You are not in the church for fun. We are not here for fun. We are not here for fun, people. I'm not preaching and screaming for fun. Some time ago, I used to pay people to work for me at work so that I'll be able to preach in church on Sunday to you. You don't want to know how much I pay. And you think it's for fun. It's not for fun. People make high sacrifices to make you comfortable wherever you are. It can be at your workplace, but you never know. It can be in your family. You have no idea. For some of you, all you want is your school fees. You call your brother, you call your sister, and all you want is that it reflects in your account. You have no idea the sacrifice they go through to send the money. And when it is your turn, you are enjoying in the palace. Esther, Esther, I pick you up as an offer to stay with me. When I heard there was an opening in the palace, I put you in the contest and God favored you to have become queen. Your people are going to die for some of you. Your assignment to do is, is, is to deliver prostitutes in your area. Your assignment is to rise to a level that nobody has risen in academia in your family. And look at you. After diploma, you have settled. After degree, you have settled. And all you are thinking about is marriage, money, salary, marriage, money, salary. Salary does not make anyone great. Destiny makes a man great. <laughs> Esther, why are you comfortable when your people are going to be killed? Esther chapter 4 verse 12. Going. Getting to somewhere. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. No, Esther was giving excuses. Eh, everybody in the palace knows when you go to the king and blah blah. If you don't go at the right time, you can die. Is it not the same as if you sit down? Hey man who scheme, and we will all die, and the truth will come out that you are my you are a Jewish. Because they didn't know that Esther was a Jewish. That was what Mordecai kept from them. Sometimes you need to know how to keep certain information. It's a message. There are some informations that is not for public consumption. It's for another day. But I'm sure it has hit somebody. Mordecai never told, and he told Esther, never tell them you know me. That is how the system can work. 
So he said, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not, give me the message version of all this. Mordecai sent her this message. Don't think that just because you live in the king's house, you are the one Jew who will not get out of this alive. By the time they are killing people, they will start choking you. She is a Jewish too. If you persist in staying silent, a time, at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive for the Jews from someplace else. Look, your increase is attached to your assignment. Your glory is attached to your assignment. If Esther had kept quiet, nobody would have been preaching about Esther today. Nobody. If you keep quiet, deliverance for the Jewish will come from somewhere. But you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows? Maybe you were made queen. You were made a lawyer. You were made an accountant. You were made a doctor. You were made a chorister. You were made an usher to wipe away a certain curse in your family. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows that I was made a pastor to wipe away a calamity in my family? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows that you were made an instrumentalist in the house of the Lord, not in a nightclub? Who knows? Who knows you were made a sound engineer in the church and not in a nightclub? For a reason. Esther, you were made a queen for this time. So he said, if... No, move on to... Esther sent back. So the thing now provoked Esther. The same person who was giving excuses. Sometimes God have to. So today God sent me to speak to you. Why you want to say Esther? And I am your Mordecai today. I'm speaking to you. Now the same Esther who was giving excuses here and there. Something entered. Have, have you experienced that thing before? That somebody spoke something to you and and all of a sudden, whatever you said didn't mean anything to you again. The things began to do something. Something was doing it. As we say it, in, something was doing Esther like, ah. He said, then Esther sent back her answer to Mordecai. Go and get all the Jews living in Susa today. Fast for me. Hey. Don't eat or drink because there. What Esther said before is true. Is the fact that if you go before the king at a certain time, there's only one repercussion. Kill you. Is the fact. But the God that is behind you, the God that is in you, the God that called you, he is the protocol breaker. Whatever he has destined in your life, he will watch his work to perform. So whatever man-made system has been put in place and that thing is denying you your purpose, if you go before him, if you engage him, if you go before him and query him and plead your case and pray to him, the same God who was with Abraham, the same God who was with Moses, the same God of the promise is the same God of the blessing. The same God of the promise is the same God of power. When you engage him and you talk to God and you pray on your knees and you cry out to him and you make advancement, that same God will multiply your footsteps. Your footsteps will sound like an army. Your voice will stand like the defeater of your enemy. But when you sit back and you quell in fear and you stay in fear and you are timid, your God cannot be put to action because faith without works is dead. I came with a voice. I'm speaking to the spirit of someone. I'm spirit speaking to the mind of someone. I'm speaking to the bones and the tissues for Jeremiah said your word was like fire shut up in my bones let this word be like fire shut up in your bones until you arise unto purpose and assignment somebody shout I am arising I feel like preaching 
Jesus. He said, go and fast and pray. Nobody should eat for three days. And I and my mates will fast with you. If you will do this, I will go to the king. Even though it's forbidden. And if I die, I die. Why do you think that, look, your ears, it has an assignment. Your eyes, they have an assignment. Your hair even has an assignment. Your eyebrow even has an assignment. Your beard even has an assignment. Because of COVID-19, they said that if you leave your beard, it will trap the virus and you will not get COVID-19. All of a sudden, we have had a lot of Osama Bin Laden's around because they want to trap the COVID. What are you saying? Even your hands have an assignment. Your legs has an assignment. Your stomach has an assignment. Why do you think that you are not on assignment? I came to wake somebody up. Maybe when we say stop fornicating because you go to hell, you are not listening. I came with another message. You are on an assignment. Turn and take up the assignment. Turn and take up the assignment. For somebody is waiting for you to rise. Somebody is waiting for you to rise. Your assignment will cause you to do a lot of things that ordinary people will not. Samson was going to be a deliverer before he was born. Conditions were laid down. Don't baba his head. He must not touch dead body. He, there are things you must do to enter into assignment. You are not like everybody. We are not talking about cultural holiness or cultural Christianity. We are talking about true Christianity. You were called as a Christian. And I prepared a sermon on how will people know that you are a Christian. Five points. I won't say it. When I preach it, you will know. People must know that you are a Christian. When I ask you, are you a Christian? You will tell me yes. Because you had an encounter. By the time I'm asking you, that means I am not sure. Are you here? By the time somebody is asking you, I believe you Christian. That means not sure. But there are things that makes a tree a tree. There are things that makes a stadium a stadium. There are things that makes water water. When we call ourselves Christians, we are game changers. We come in the image of lions. We come in the image of horses. Are you a horse? Are you a lion? Are you a palm tree? 2022 must not end without a transformation in your life. Start something. Go get your forms. Go get, do something. Put yourself under pressure. Don't just let it be. You want to travel to work. To do what? You lack faith. Many of the people traveling, they lack faith. Yes. You can be quiet. I don't care. You lack faith that you can flourish in Ghana. You travel. We won't stop you. You go there 20 years. One day you will see that you are walking on the street of UK or Germany or wherever, then you see me passing with entourage, but you are walking with uh, If you have faith, you will not pursue visa. You will pursue God. And that means that you are going to do all that God, God's plan not, doesn't end in curse. It ends in blessings when it is fully unveiled and worked out. You know, there are people, there are plans you worked out that failed. God's plan doesn't fail. You are not in the world to look at things. You are not in this church to look at things. I came to provoke you. I'm ending in five minutes. I came to provoke someone. Enough with you spend all your time on television. You spend all your time on social media. Watching video upon video. Not even the proper ones. You are wasting data. You, you, you hardly pray. You hardly plan. 
If even you're on social media, learn how to run a vision. Learn the definition of vision. Learn the challenges of vision. Learn how to start a business. Learn how to bake cake. You can learn how to bake cake on the cocoa without going to a school. You are there. You watch Chatawale fooling. You watch Stone Boy doing this. You watch this doing this. And then you are there. You are just laughing. <laughs> I listened to a message by Bishop Matthew Ashimolo. I'm putting it in my own words. I'll come and preach it. Time management. Time management. That is why when you call pastor, he doesn't pick. Don't get angry. I was seriously doing something. So when I come back, I'll call you. If they call, anytime they call you, they get you. It means you are not serious. So yes. As for you, Aaron, you cring. Then they pick. Nothing good. And they pick. Hello, 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 hello. Oh. You have nothing good to say. Because, that, and that is why when you call someone, there are some people when they call you and you don't pick, then they get angry. Because they think that you are not doing anything like them. It doesn't mean that from today. You are not busy, cry, they call you aerobic. So that you look like it, you are busy. You are deceiving yourself. Give the Lord a clap of for someone. Oh, Jesus. God created you for his pleasure. What do I mean in three minutes? God created you for his pleasure. Any assignment that causes God pain. It's not a proper assignment. Don't come and say, oh God, Pastor, I found, as you preach, I saw my purpose. So my purpose to open a pub. To make people happy after work. <laughs> Maybe if you Christianize it, But most husbands who stay in pubs have not built a good home after work. You can't go home. You go to a pub. You are guilty of building a bad family. Write it down. You know me, I don't mind. Write it. You can put me anywhere. And whoever wants to come and ask me, I will take him through the procedure. By the time he finishes, he will know that what I'm saying, he can't hide. What are you doing at the pub at 11 p.m.? When you close from work at five, latest eight, you are sitting at pub because they are your enemies that are in the house. God created you for his pleasure. Any assignment. I am an actor. I'm going to add pornography. Something's wrong with you. I'm going to add. Because I like acting. I've discovered that I naturally act. You were created for his pleasure. Don't you know? So any assignment, if there are people there, there are things we must do, church. There are things we must do. Today as I was driving, coming, I was seeing a lot of people, these quarters, and I was just asking God, God, give me money. Give me money. I need money. They are just there. The gospel is not just in words, we have an assignment. And your assignment eh, is around money. I'm telling you. Your assignment is around money. Any assignment that lacks money can never be fully executed. I look at them and say, there, hey, we can have overflow upon overflow if we have money. Maybe you, when you get money, you are afraid you backslide. The day you get big money and you know in your heart that you can backslide, bring it to me. Oh, that's a serious thing. You just give it to me. I'll pay you one day. Just bring it. Maybe like your uncle will be a car car. I send you 30,000 euros. And when you saw him, hey! Oh, uncle, what happened? Me. Small holiness have worked in this 30 years. Just call me. Loan it to me. Will put a down payment plan. Give it to me. 
by the time you see what your money is being used for, you will not even collect it. There are things. You know, there are people in their homes right now. They want to go to church, but they don't have the courage to go to church. They've lost hope. They are tired of life. And when somebody is tired of life, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have life. He has no helper, number one. He has no purpose. He's black. All you have to do when you go for evangelism, after the person has been preached to Christ, you ask the person, what do you do? What do you want to do? You see that, oh, are you sure you want the answer? You say, yes, I want to go and learn how to sew. Okay, next week I'll be here. Let me see the invoice. I'll send it to pastor. At my church, the Ube will take you to school. You think that when you take that person to the, he won't follow you to church? Do you know how many of them are there? You see, you are wasting time. You see, they took you to school, you went misbehaving. I am Mordecai. I'm preaching to you like this. I waste that one day, eh? Somebody, do if you want the church bank account, come and see me, I'll give it to you. Yes, come and see me, I'll give it. We don't display it because we want to give it to serious people. Yeah. There are people who are not in this church, but they are so concerned about the needs of the church because they hear some of the things we use our money for. May you discover purpose. And may you not get it wrong. May you not get it wrong. May you not waste your time. You see, it is not that we have a problem if you get pregnant outside marriage. We don't have a problem. But you worry the system. You worry the system. You worry the system. You disturb everybody, including yourself. It's not that we have a problem if you go to school and you don't learn. We don't have you can go and go and fool. But you worry the system. When you come out and you see that after four years, eh, you are still, you are now you've now repented and you are going to remedial and you meet your mates who are in SS with you. They are doing national service. Then you see that you worry the system. You are unemployed, keep applying. Keep praying. Find something to do for God. The little money that comes in your hand. There are many business opportunities online. You don't need office. Somebody dashes you thousand cities. The first thing in your mind, don't you have money perfume? You are sick. There's something wrong with you. I came as Mordecai. That was how Mordecai was talking to you. He sent messengers to go and tell Esther. You sit there and say you are a queen. By the time they are killing us, they will kill all of you. You and your family will be wiped off. You don't have money. You are unemployed. Somebody gives you thousands. Do you know how much children's shoes thousand cities can buy? You update your status and something, something ventures. We shall make it ventures. <laughs> we shall make it ventures. We came to breakthrough enterprise. <laughs> Update your status. Somebody that will look at it and say, Oh, my brother, if I go and buy it at Makola, I'll buy it for my brother. And you put small, small margins. Don't go and break them. Don't put your poverty <laughs> alleviation budget. Like this one there, if I don't break through now, there, then that's <laughs> I want to see you change. Some of you are too static for me. That's why I woke up at 2 a.m. Eh? I tried changing this message, it never changed. 2 a.m. You can ask my wife, 2 a.m. Because some of you are too static. I said, Maka. And no demon has stop you. You yourself, you are like Esther. Refuel him. It's like Monday. Today is 20th February. 20 or 
20th. And I heard her say, my birthday is coming again. That means I'm older again. When your birthday is coming, as you am so. But some of you, then you are, you start planning party three months ahead. That we, you say, I'll be using it. This one will be doing it. And then be, this time I'm going here for a massage. You know, let me do that. You are giving the bills to them. This one is taking this. This one is taking it. As if after your, your, your birthday, the world comes to an end. Birthdays are times of reflection, thinking, what next? What did I do last year that I should revise? Don't mark time. No demon can stop you. If you don't stop yourself, nobody can stop you. Fight the spirit of depression. Fight the spirit of waywardness. Fight the spirit of um, um, suicide. A lot of us here, most of us, I can see three people. This last year, you nearly committed suicide. Yeah. Three people. Fight it and get to know that you are not the only one suffering. You have a lot of people with you. Yes, a lot of people. Lucy, a lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people. When I was, I was talking to some pastors and I said, Charlie, COVID has worried us so. Hey, stop, 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 stop. Pastor Prince, stop. You. Let us talk. I said, no, 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 no. There is a fall and there is a fall. So sometimes you think that your own is so bad. Somebody said, all her choruses have traveled. So now when they go and it's praise and worship time, they play song. Yes, they will sing and then they will preach. As they were talking, I just kept quiet. Somebody said his tithe moved from 35,000 to 12,100. Then somebody said, oh, yours is good. My own is 7,000 now. I said, wow. Destiny is waiting for you. Orphanages are in you. Your family. You have to finish quickly and take care of people. Why are you wasting your time? I want you to rise up. I want you to pray some prayers. clapping, you have to clap with that. When when Peter got the increase, instrumentalist, I don't like it when you go down and come. If I'm preaching, sit. Don't change the rules. Are you here? He doesn't speak well. Then you sit. Then we finish the ministry and we all go home. Clap for them. When Peter had the increase, it was because he was fishing. He was doing something. Jesus didn't call idle people. He called people when they were fishing. They were mending the net. They were doing accountancy. I want you to get angry with the state you are in. I know God said we should be grateful. In all things. Yeah, he said we should be grateful. But Joshua said, give me that mountain. There are mountains of destinies to be covered. I want you to lift your voice and begin to pray that Lord, open my eyes and let me identify my assignment. Lift your voice and begin to pray. You are a problem solver. You are a software developer. You are a church builder. You are a shepherd of thousands. You are a soul winner. You are a helper to someone. I 
Absalom. He was handsome. He was a potential. But he was wasted. May you not be wasted. May I not be wasted. Like Judas, an apostle. But he was wasted. People like Dockers, people like Libya, nobody laid hands on them, nobody anointed them. But you, Judas, the Lord called you, the Lord imparted you, the Lord anointed you, and you got wasted. Be desperate and pray. The Lord, I don't want to be wasted. I don't want to be wasted. I will not be a wasted destiny. I refuse to be a wasted destiny. We refuse to be a Western church. I refuse to be a Western pastor. I refuse to be a Western Christian. Pray. I refuse to be a Western father. I refuse to be a Western husband. I refuse to be a Western shepherd.
have to come and lie on the altar and pray that you will not be wasted. I will not be wasted. I am God gave you as a reward to your generation. God gave you as a reward to your family. You will not be wasted. David was given as a reward to Israel to bring down Goliath. He did not waste his destiny. You want to pray that whatever I've been called for. Something is breaking for in somebody's life. Rabbara Koto, Rabbara Koto, Rabbara Koto, Rabbara Mahaya, I can't do that. Every chain on your hands, I'm broken. Every chain on your legs, I'm broken. You are coming out of the tomb of stagnation. You are coming out of the tomb. The wilderness, I prophesy the giant in you is coming alive. I 
he realized that the blessing was gone. But success is when you fall down and you decide to rise and you rise again. He arose and with the little blessing he received, one statement, the Bible said the day he met Jacob and Jacob was coming to gift him a free will gift of $13,500. Esau said, keep it. I have enough. That means that no matter how you fall, no matter what you enter in, no matter what has entangled your life today, that you that you don't remember the last time you had a testimony and you laugh. You don't remember the last time you thank God because of a miracle. You have been thanking God by faith. I am here to announce to you the things you have thanked God for, yes, they Lord. have been commanded unto you. Amen. I prophesy over everybody here. Yes, Lord. As I wept before the Lord this morning, and I said, Lord, every discouraged person in Carrie's temple, anybody that has pushed and pushed and pushed and is at the point of giving up, God, I beg you, step in. Yes, Lord. I wept before him and he said, go and tell my people, they are somebody's. Amen. They are mine and they are for my pleasure. Amen. I will glorify my name in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 